You know how I always say that I've always been a writer? Well, today we found some proof from my past and we are going through some of the stories I wrote as a kid. Welcome to The Right Mama with Jennifer Aline. I am a freelance writer, social media manager, and my debut women's fiction novel is coming out before the end of 2020. Today we are going to kind of go down memory lane. It's going to be a very casual video with some videos thrown in there of my girls going through what we're going to go through today. I said I have written for literally as long as I can remember and I went through some boxes in storage and found some proof along with a book that I have always kept pretty close by because it is like my childhood Bible. I have an entire story in there that you will check out. But we are just going to kind of go through some of the stories that I found in this box and laugh at them and just kind of realize how crazy I was and still am today. This book right here is one that literally is filled to the end. It is a sketchbook filled to the end. And we're going to go through this one at the end, it is very special to me. First, we're gonna go through this lovely cat and dog folder I found in a box. And when I open it, you even see a picture of me, which we'll zoom in on, it's a little scary. And we're gonna go through this folder. Let's check it out. Okay, the cat and dog folder, dun dun dun. Let's see what we got. Let's start off since we found me. This is a picture of me when I was little. I've always been crazy. Hey, mommy. Who is that? Mommy, wow. That's mommy? Mommy, wow. <laughs> mommy, rawr. Lucy, who is this? That's mommy, rawr. That's mommy, rawr. <laughs> mommy, rawr. We're going to start off with this story because it obviously was very professionally made, nice hard cover. Um, but this this story of Seppi the mouse, I guess. What animal, Lolo? What animal's that? It's a mouse. It's a mouse. It looks a little like a bear, huh? I, I used to do this a lot. I would get cardboard from shoe boxes or something and try to make a legit book out of it. This is back when I actually used a Y for my name. It changed in middle school to an I, so I became Jenny with an I. Um, we'll read the first page, and it's obviously about a lovely mouse that looks just like a mouse, I think. One day there lived a mouse named Seppi. She gets in lots of trouble. There is a cat named Lair. Lair wants to eat Seppi. Very creative. For the time of this casual video, we'll just skip through a few pages. Whoa! Seppi wanted to talk to Lair, and she did. Can I be your friend? Well, okay, said Lair. I really wish uh, life was as easy as that when you wanted to be friends. And that's my Seppi story, and I even wrote a back blurb. Look at this. This was my back blurb that I created. It says, next we... Are gonna take a look on on the prairie i think a lot of these stories i found are probably between the ages of like our third grade until like sixth grade honestly um because i was jenny with a y until seventh grade so that's where i'm gonna stop it i was super in to like the oregon trail and like the old olden days i used to call it so i i'm not surprised that this is a story that i wrote back in the day but you can see that I was very into my stories and very into my writing ever since I was a little kid. And yeah, I got some nice illustrations. I even finished this whole story, um, which I started so many stories and never finished them. So we'll read the first page because um, why not? Oh, I even wrote some cursive in there. One day long ago, a young girl named Jen was writing something to an old friend. E-I-N-D, friend. It sounded like this. Dear Trev, I miss you. Come up sometime. Your 
gal or pal, like pal, P-A-I-L maybe. Jen. Now I'm going to stop here because this is funny. I used to have my next door neighbor named Trevor. And I'm thinking that this must have been written in like fourth grade because I moved away from the house where my old friend Trevor lived next door in third grade. So maybe this was fourth or third grade that I wrote this. And then down here even mentions some family in real life. She gave the paper to father. Mother was talking, taking care of San Sonia, my baby sister, Carla was playing with Katie, my mutt. I actually have a sister named Carly, and we did have a, a puppy named Katie, so that's really funny. Um, but it's it's kind of cute to go back in time and check out what you used to do. Kind of looks like someone's on the toilet looking at a cell phone we didn't have back in the day. Okay, if you were an American Girl doll person, you probably know who Felicity is. She was my American Girl doll. Um, and again, I know this is before seventh grade because <laughs> it's Jenny with a Y. Um, but I, the front of this is a harder paper. So I was trying to make this look legit. And the inside is actually lined paper with little pictures. Um, and if I really get into the back of it, I went all the way to the end. Um, let's see. Oh my gosh, I really went into this. And I was very into Felicity. I read all of her little books um that came with the doll but this is more proof that i literally have been writing ever since forever and i'll read like the first paragraph hello my name is felicity i'm an american girl this story is about my life my life was not hard or easy i had a few friends especially my old horse penny <laughs> oh boy we're gonna move on to the old well by jennings pat and that's me i used to make up all these random pen names as a kid and I think this is when I started getting into like designing stuff on paint I think that's like when paint was big back in the day I'm really dating myself right now but paint was big so I'm like oh let me make a cover I thought I was so cool I wonder how much of this I wrote because most of the time I'd start a story and never finish it so I'll flip through the old well and see oh wow that's intense see how far it goes so it goes like quarter in and there's all this lined paper but um we'll read this paragraph let's see one windy night lucy it's one of my girls names i had no clue back then lucy was going in the back of the barn to feed the chickens lucy started to feed the chickens until she looked at the well lucy screamed then ran lucy told her parents her mom said the legend is true her dad just nodded or noted in this another felicity story with a fancy cover i really tried i really thought these were going to go somewhere um felicity's journey a diary of felicity merriman and i won't read all this um but 1774 i really liked that time back in the day i was very into i don't know much about history but i really did like pretending it was the quote-unquote olden days um and I really didn't know much about the olden days, but it was fun to pretend I knew. What's happening in this story? This is Fatto and Hugie, and they're hippos. And literally, it's like a one-page long story. I don't know when I wrote this. My handwriting is way messier, and it's like two chapters long. Um, so this had to be like second or third grade. Um, there once lived two hippos. Two hippos. Um, with an apostrophe in hippos. Fatto the boy and Hugie the girl. <laughs> this is a very, uh, very stereotypical story. We're going to move on. This is a random poem. No clue where these, these poems came from, but this is gum ain't dumb. Gum, gum everywhere. Gum in school and on my chair. Gum on the board and in my locker. But in my mouth, I'm not a big talker until my teacher saw me like that. And in the principal's room, I sat, and then the principal shoved something in his teeth and stood up and smiled at me. And then he said, let's have a little fun. I know bubblegum really ain't dumb. <laughs> oh, I did like writing poetry sometimes back in the day, but it really wasn't my thing. Speckles Christmas. My grandparents... Um, had a dairy farm as a kid and I used to go and play um, at the farm when we visited them so I'm guessing this red calf um, 
was kind of inspired from the farm, an inspiration of the farm. Um, you could tell I was kind of getting into using Word that was brand new back then and illustration on paint. Um, started with a quote and I went on for this one for a while. Um, I even put the asterisks in there. Um, okay, maybe not that long. <laughs> Four pages. Uh, let's see. Speckles ran to her favorite place, the pasture. At night, Speckles would look at the stars. Shapes would appear like evergreen trees and stockings. That night, she was confused. I just don't get it. I just don't. So obviously, it's the Christmas story. It does say it right there. And there's a tree. The calf is thinking of the tree. This had to be... Still, because of this, because I know of the cover, it has to be like fourth-ish grade. So that's when I end this little folder adventure. Um, there are a couple other little stories, Lamute and the Young Girl, um, that are in here as well. But this, I remember making this. This was a screenplay that I made in a bunch of us. A bunch of my friends, actually, we tried to like do it. And during playtime, we would act it out and be different characters. Of course, I was Felicity, as you can't tell. Obviously, this is when American Girl dolls were big. Um, but, oh my gosh, I remember acting this out. But starts off, blam, those rotten children. Don't they have a living? Oh my gosh. And there's not even quotes or anything. But this had to be fourth or fifth grade because it's typed. And I remember doing this in fourth or fifth grade. I think it was fifth grade that I did this. Um, but oh my gosh, I remember doing this out on the playground and people came over on the weekend. We really thought this was going to be a, like a, a musical or like a show. We worked really hard. Oh, the memories. Okay. Now open the book gently. Gently. And Alora, this book is Seppi. So the grand finale of this little trip into memory lane and into my past creativity, I need to go over this story because the character in this story, I wrote about for years. So many stories were based around this character. My entire backyard growing up in the woods was this world I created and everything is in this book. The character I created as a kid, um, his name was Worthy and he had a light bulb on his head. This is Worthy. And I used to write about him, draw about him, put him everywhere. He was like my imaginary friend <laughs> that I used to play with in the backyard. I can't believe I've been bidding this. But I created so many stories about this character. And this, this book just, it's like I said, it's literally filled. And this is my imagination as a child. And it just shows that if you're a creative kid, that creativity is just ingrained in you. It just doesn't stop. Um, but I wrote about Worthy and his best friend Beeps and Kendra Ketchup. I really like Ketchup, um, so I made a character based on Ketchup. But um, these were like all of his friends <laughs> that he went to school with. And these were like his teachers, I think. Some were teachers. I even did different chapters. Like these were professors. And I know this is fourth, fifth, sixth ish grade that I wrote in this because. It was Harry Potter. Harry Potter came out around this time. Um, and it got very, like, magical in here. And um, this is me. Yeah. Magical, mystical. That's what my name was. Um, these, these are just, like, pictures I drew. These were some of the games they played. Quaffle. So that shows that it came kind of from Harry Potter. Um, but I don't want to go through all this. Like, these are different potions. These are actually rocks I found in my backyard that I made into something. Um, transportation. You can, again, tell Harry Potter was a big inspiration. But this, it just makes me laugh because all of my life, I've been one of those kids that had a huge imagination, play contently by myself, drawing and writing all these stories you saw today. But really, it shows how that mind that you have as a kid, really, you grow into it, you learn from it. And if you are so passionate about something, you don't stop. No, today I don't write fantasy. I love reading fantasy. I made literally an entire book based on a fantasy world. And maybe I'd go back to writing fantasy. But I've always been creative. I've always written stories. And if it's your constant, it's been my constant, it doesn't go away. Um, these are flying otters. 
otters are my favorite animal. And I'll, I'll end with, oh, let's go and drop it's a cat and an egg. I'll end with the dragons. They should be in here somewhere. I know one of my girls found the dragons. A dragon! That is a dragon, good. They knew they were dragons too. <laughs> but like I said, this book is filled with characters and people and worthy and clothes. This is a map of my backyard growing up and the woods in the backyard and the world I created. So just wanted to go through that. Um, this is like my childhood Bible. This is what I did even when friends were over. Hey, do you want to play pretend? And if they said no, I'd probably end up playing pretend by myself. Didn't care. Thank you for sticking around and going down memory lane with me and my girls for a little bit. I've just always been a very imaginative person. And when I found this folder, I was like, let me get my blue Bible, my Worthy's World book, um, and bring it out and just share it. Because when people say they've written all their life, they usually mean it. I have written books and stories since first, second, third grade, and it hasn't stopped yet. So if you're creative, stick to it. If it's your constant, you know that means it's your passion. So you liked this casual chatty video, click the thumbs up, push subscribe, and you will get notified when these videos come out. The content comes out every Friday. So stay creative and drink your coffee.